This is a tutorial on solving rational equations. There are two basic methods for solving rational equations. The most common one is to use the lowest common denominator. Now the lowest common denominator is the least common multiple of all the denominators of all the terms in an expression. For example, here we have 4 over x minus 4 plus 2 over 4x is equal to 4 over x. Now, the least common multiple of all of our denominators, well, the factors of my first denominator here is x minus 4. That's its only factor, so we write it in. Then we're going to multiply that by all the factors of our next denominator, so 4 and x. And then we go to our last denominator, and the only factor in this 4 over x is x. But I already have an x in my least common multiple, so I don't need to write it again. And our lowest common denominator then, or the least common multiple of all of our denominators, would be x minus 4 times 4 times x. Or I can write that as 4x times x minus 4. Now when we solve a rational equation, we can't solve it with variables in our denominators. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this lowest common denominator that we found and we're going to multiply every term in this equation by it. If we do that, our first term will look like 4 times our lowest common denominator of 4x times x minus 4 and that's over x minus 4. And then we're going to add that to our second term, so 2, but it's also multiplied by our lowest common denominator. So it's multiplied by 4x times x minus 4. And this is all still over 4x. And these two terms then are equal to 4 times our lowest common denominator of 4x times x minus 4 and this is still over x. Now if we look closely at our first term here we have an x minus 4 in the numerator and an x minus 4 in the denominator. Well if you take x minus 4 and you divide it by x minus 4 these terms will cancel. Now let's look at our second term here. We have 2 times 4x times x minus 4. Well, this is divided by 4x, so we have a 4x in the numerator and a 4x in the denominator, so these terms will cancel. Now we look at our right hand side, we have 4 times 4x times x minus 4, but this is divided by x. Well, we have an x and an x, so these x's will cancel. What we're left with then is 4 times 4x or you can write that as 16x. And we're adding that to 2 times x minus 4. And if I distribute this 2 inside, we'll have a 2x and a minus 8. That's equal to 4 times 4, which is 16. And 16 times x minus 4, if I distribute that inside, this is all equal to 16x minus 64. Now next I'm going to combine some like terms. So I have a 16x and a 2x. So this side has an 18x and then minus 8. In my right hand side, can't be simplified. I'm going to move this 16x over to the left hand side by subtracting 16x from both sides. And we'll be left with 2x minus 8 is equal to negative 64. I'm going to add 8 to both sides and we'll get 2x is equal to negative 56. Divide both sides by 2 and we get x is equal to negative 28. So our solution then is x is equal to negative 28. Now the other method for solving rational equations is to use the cross product property. 
and you can only use the cross product property when your rational expressions are set equal to each other and there's only one expression on each side of the equal sign. So basically you have two fractions here that are in proportion. Remember if you had three-fourths and that was equal to x over 8 you could cross multiply and you would get 3 times 8 is equal to 4 times x. And then you could use this equation to solve for x. We're going to do the same thing with this rational equation. Here we have 2x over 5x minus 4 is equal to negative 4 over 3x. I am going to cross multiply these and we'll end up with 2x times 3x and that's going to be equal to 5x minus 4 times a negative 4. Now if I simplify each side, 2x times 3x is 6x squared. If I distribute this negative 4 inside the parentheses, negative 4 times 5x is negative 20x and negative 4 times negative 4 is a positive 16. Here I have a quadratic, so I'm going to move everything to one side, so I'm going to add 20x to both sides. I'll have 6x squared plus 20x is equal to 16. Subtract 16 on both sides. And we'll have 6x squared plus 20x minus 16 is equal to 0. Now I have my quadratic and it's set equal to 0. I'm going to factor this to solve it. The first thing I'm going to do is pull out a 2 from each term. So we'll have 3x squared plus 10x minus 8. So this will be 2 times Now my factors of 3x squared will be 3x and x. And my factors of negative 8 are minus 2 and plus 4. Now using the zero product property, I know that if 3x minus 2 is equal to 0, then this whole expression will be equal to 0. And I also know that if x plus 4 is equal to 0, then this whole expression will be equal to 0. I can solve each of these. If I add 2 to both sides, I'll have 3x is equal to 2. Divide by 3 on both sides and we get x is equal to 2 thirds. If I subtract 4 from both sides in our second equation, I get x is equal to negative 4. So my solutions for this rational equation or x is equal to two-thirds or x is equal to negative four. Now the last thing we have to talk about when we solve rational equations are extraneous solutions. Let's look at this example and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Here we have x over x squared minus 16 and that's equal to negative one over x plus four. Now I basically have two fractions here so I'm going to solve this through cross multiplication if I do that, I'll have x times x plus 4, and that's equal to negative 1 times x squared minus 16. I'm going to distribute this x inside this x plus 4. We'll have x squared plus 4x. And that's equal to negative 1 distributed inside this x squared minus 16 is a negative x squared plus 16. I'm going to add this x squared to both sides. I'll have 2x squared plus 4x is equal to 16. And I'm going to move the 16 over. And we'll get 2x squared plus 4x minus 16 is equal to 0. Now I'm going to factor this and solve for x. If I do, I can pull out a greatest common factor of 2. So we'll have 2 times x squared plus 2x minus 8. This x squared plus 2x minus 8, I can factor into an x 
and an x, and a positive 4 and a negative 2. Now this is all equal to 0. And I can tell from the zero product property that if this term is equal to zero, then this whole expression will equal to zero. So basically if x is equal to negative four, this whole expression will equal zero. And this other factor here, x minus two, if x is equal to two, then this whole expression will equal to zero. So my solutions then would be x is equal to negative four and x is equal to two, except we are using rational equations here and all rational equations if they have a variable in the denominator have excluded domain values so let's look at these two domains for these two rational expressions if x squared minus 16 is equal to 0 then this expression is undefined if i add 16 to both sides we get x squared is equal to 16 take the square root of both sides I get the absolute value of x is equal to 4. So if x is equal to plus or minus 4, then this left-hand side is undefined. Well, notice that one of my solutions here is a negative 4, and that is included here. So you can't plug in negative 4 into this rational equation because it would make it undefined. So this solution is called extraneous. And that just means that it's not really a solution. So the only solution to this rational equation is x is equal to 2. And that completes the tutorial on solving rational equations.